Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. My name is Raja Zahira Afika binti Raja Zana Abidin, matrix number B20EA0024 from section 4 group 13 and I will be presenting my minor part which includes earthworks, cost and estimation and erosion and sedimentation. So the first one is earthworks. In general, earthworks is a process whereby the surface of the earth is excavated, transported, and compacted to another location. So the purpose of earthworks is to establish a platform level for a development site with proper gradients. The components that is involved in earthworks is the survey plan, which includes topography plan, proposed level, and cross-section view. And there is also uh, some components that needs to be checked in the survey plan, such as BM, TBM, key plan, location plan, site boundary, and any nearby components, such as existing manhole, water pipe, etc. So, next is the scope of work for the earthwork departments. The first one is set up a proposed platform level. The second one is cut and fill process by using grid method. The third one is slope stability analysis by using by shop method. And lastly is the earthwork cut and fill volume calculation. So as you can see in this picture is the site division of the proposed site for our project. So basically the earthwork department, they divided the proposal into three phase or three section. The first one is the northern zone. The second one is the central zone and the third one is the southern zone. Next is the site inventory. Basically, this is a site inventory that the that our earthwork department have prepared, which is actually a process for the observation of the existing features that include natural top topography and also man-made structure. So basically, the earthwork department has done several drafts because of some modification that need to be done. So this is the first draft. Based on the calculation, the percentage difference that they obtain for the northern part, central part, and southern part are 43.6%, 97.9%, and 16.78% respectively. So the overall percentage difference for the whole site that they obtain is 48.08%. And due to that, they conclude that they have to do some modification of proposed level and they decided to focus on the northern zone and the central zone. This is because uh, at the northern and the central zone, the value of the percentage difference that they obtain is big compared to the southern zone. So for the second draft, as you can see here, according to their calculation, the percentage difference that they obtained has decreased. For the northern zone, it become 5.3%, central zone 86.14%, and the southern zone is 1.24%. And overall percentage difference that they obtain reduced to 27.08%, and comparing to the first draft, it is reduced by 30.78%. So as you can see in this slide, the left picture is the first draft and the together with the percentage difference calculation that they obtain the result is 48.08% as mentioned from the previous slide and the right picture is the picture for the second draft together with the percentage difference calculation and they obtain 27.08% reduction another thing that to be considered in the earthwork process is cut and fill. Cut and fill is removal of excessive soil and fill in the soil where the level of the ground does not meet the requirement of proposed level. So for this process, they use the grid method uh, to calculate the volume of cut and fill. For the slope stability, it is important to be done because it is critical due to its effect. It can cause erosion, landslide, etc. So for the design, they use simplified by shop method in order to find out minimum safety factor that satisfies safety requirement. For the gradient ratio, they use 1 to 1 with the radius for trial is 8 meter, 10 meter and 12 meter. As a result, 
from their calculation, the minimum factor of safety that they obtain is 1.53% and it is considered safe. So from the overall calculation and information that the earthwork department have obtained, they pass them to other department for their use. Next is cost and estimation. Basically, cost and estimation is the prediction of proposed construction cost of specific work. They provide detailed information for the whole budget of the proposed project by the client. It is done before any graphical representation of a facility has been developed. And it is important to be done because it may help to prevent problems that arise from the overestimation due to building material and labor costs. So, the cost and estimation is done based on the earthwork specification. The proposed cost estimation for earthwork covers the cost for site clearing, excavation of topsoil, cut and fill work, disposal of excess soil, and also slope protection. So, their goal is to get cost reduction for more than 20% if possible from the original planning. So as we can see in this slide, the picture is the same as the earthwork department where they divide the proposal into three sections and this table is for the planning activities. For each operation, they schedule it by phase, which is phase one followed by phase two and phase three. So for each activities, they manage to schedule it by month. So the project can be done within the requested period by the client. Next, for the machinery specification. There are several types of machine that can be done for the construction, such as excavator, bulldozer, compactor, backhoe loader, dump truck, motor grader, flatbed truck, and feller buncher. So for the selection of machinery, uh, they can choose based on their function, capacity, rental rate, operator wage, and fuel. For the earthwork operation, they done it by section because each section give different area and different volume of soil. So there are five operations need to be considered in this process. The first one is site clearing work, which includes removal of trees, removal of roots and stem, and tree disposal. The second thing is excavation work, which includes topsoil excavation and then soil transportation. The third one is cut works, followed by fill works. For the fill works, the first thing is the soil transportation and then they fill to the proposed site. And lastly is the compaction works. Okay, so for the cost reduction, after the initial design phase, they apply value engineering in order to focus on ensuring the project's quality, performance and functionality and at the same time, they want to minimize the construction, operation, and maintenance cost. So, um, this department, they did a discussion and come out with three effective strategy. The first one is by using machines that approximately give the same capability but with lower cost per day. The second strategy is by decreasing number of machines for certain areas of earthwork. And the third one is by hiring experienced workers because it can help in increase the quality of the work done and also reduce the time of use of the machinery. So, from the initial design, the cost that they sum up is 11,498,945 ringgit and 80 cents. But after some modification and calculation, they obtain the final cost of 9,900,373 ringgit and 35 cent which they managed to achieve an overall of 20% cost reduction. Lastly is the erosion and sedimentation. For the erosion and sedimentation department, the guideline that they refer for the design process is by referring to Department of Irrigation and Drainage, DID, and Malaysia's Urban Stormwater Management Manual, or known as MESMA. So, the focus 
for this department is runoff management. Runoff management is actually a process of managing the control volume, direction, and velocity of stormwater. This is because to help in minimizing the damage and potential occurrence that can affect project site and cause unwanted incidents such as soil erosion. How does managing runoff help? It helps by shifting the direction of the stormwater and sediments away from the exposed soil by redirecting it into proper channels. It can be sediment basins or silt traps. How will it be done? It is by constructing proper transport structures such as temporary concrete drainage or by make use or improvising the earth drainage. For the design criteria for erosion and sedimentation department, there is five things that they consider. The first one is rainfall estimation. For the rainfall estimation, they include three things. The first one is average recurrence interval and then time of concentration, which is actually the time taken for runoff to flow from the most remote point upstream in the catchment area to the point under construction downstream. And the third one is average rainfall intensity. Next, the second criteria that they consider is the peak discharge estimation. For the peak discharge estimation, they use the most frequently used method, which is the rational method. This is because it gives satisfactory results, but it must be for small catchment area. So due to that, they divided the proposed site into smaller catchment area so it will be easier for calculation. Next design criteria is the temporary earth drainage. Before the beginning the earthwork, it is important to build a temporary earth drainage. This is because to help direct runoff surface water to a sediment basin or silt trap before being discharged to the closest river or public drain. So as we can see in this picture, this is the design of our earth drainage. It is trapezoidal shape and due to the requirement, the depth must be less than 1.2 meter. So they come out with 0 0.9 meter. Next is sediment control. Sediment control is a technique or building that helps to prevent eroded soil from construction sites being swept away and contaminate surrounding waterways. Typically, in most construction sites, there must be sediment traps or sediment basins positioned downstream. So, in sediment control process, there is three calculations made. The first one is soil loss estimation. The second one is sediment yield estimation. For the sediment yield estimation, it is, it is actually the amount of sediment expected at end of drainage of the, de of the designated site. So this assessment is made by Modified Universal Soil Loss Equation, MUSLIM. The third one is sediment basin. Sediment basin consists of an impoundment, dam, riser pipe outlet, and emergency spillway. So the function of sediment basin here is to collect and hold sediment from site during construction for an extended period before permanent drainage structures is built. So this table is obtained from MESMA and it explains the requirement of sediment basins. Lastly, there are several things to be included in this erosion and sedimentation. The first one is wash bay. The function of wash bay is to remove debris from tires, undercarriage and body of moving machinery at construction access or exit location. Any equipment leaving the construction site, they must go through wash bay because it helps to prevent dirt from clogging municipal road. Next is the silt fence. The function of silt fence here is as temporary sediment barrier and it is made of porous fabric. It helps to trap silt and sediment from disturbed area during construction phase. And lastly is hydro seeding or turfing. It is an economical method that helps to stabilize and protect soil surface from rainfall and runoff of the disturbed area. 
This method is used for designing the cut and fill slope surface. So that's all for my minor part. Thank you.